Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here. And in this video, I'm going to be bringing in Adronis. And Adronis is going to be speaking about the RH negative blood. So I will go ahead and bring him in now and we'll get started. We are here at this time. We bid you greetings and thank you for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this broadcast through your internet collective consciousness. We have been asked to share insight as it pertains to the phenomena that you would understand as the RH negative blood type. Well, as we have talked about before, the idea of the RH negative blood type is indeed extraterrestrial. It is not indigenous to your planet. The idea of indigenous hominids or indigenous Neanderthals, as you would put it, and their own appropriate sub-races contained commonly that of what you would know as the D antigen or the rhesus protein. Now, when you are looking at the idea of RH negative blood, this again is much more of a star bound quality or what you would know as hybridization, fertilization as well too. Now, basically the modern man holds again, different types of ethnicities, different types of sub races as well too. And there are those within the modern man or what you would term as the, shall we say, human or homo human in that way, that they themselves have had, shall we say, certain degrees relating to the idea of RH positive or RH negative. It all depends upon the ethnicity because there are certain genomes that are intermixed, intermingled together with certain ethnicities upon your planet, such as your native Indian, such as your native Americans, such as your Asian, such as your African, etc. Different archetypes, different forms of genetics, different types of genomes altogether. Now, when you're looking at the RH positive blood in that way, if we were to again utilize that form of example, that this cell simply contains that rhesus protein. Now, what that protein does is it's an amplifier. It is an antenna in that way that communicates together with other cells. Therefore, when you look at RH negative to where there is an absence particularly for that protein does not mean that the cells are impaired. They are just more intricately designed to function without the necessity of a protein acting as an antenna. Now, of course, there are challenges when there is, let's say, for example, a woman who has RH negative blood and her own partner, as it were, who has RH positive blood. Now, when the RH positive genome, in that sense, connects together with the female and therefore a baby is produced, there are antibodies within the RH negative female attempting to combat the protein simply because the RH protein is not compatible with an RH negative host. And so basically the protein becomes like a foreign body. It almost acts like a virus and it can actually lead to, shall we say, fatalities pertaining to the fetus and to the baby inside. So this is why there are really two different models. You have the rhesus protein for those again that have the genome relating to that of RH positive blood. Again, this is much more of an indigenous trait. And then you have those that again have much more of the star bound genetics that relate to that of the RH negative blood, an absence of the protein or the D antigen, but therefore intricately configured, calibrated cells that operate on different levels. Now, Adronis, is there more of a superior aspect here pertaining to the RH positive or the RH negative? Is one more superior than the other? No, one is not more superior than the other. One could liken it to the idea of apples and oranges. There are different configurations. There are different archetypes relating to the fruit in question, but altogether it really is just fruit. 
The same thing goes with a human body. There are different forms of genetic types, different forms of proteins or lack thereof, but nonetheless, it is still a human form. Now again, the RH negative, as we stated, is more starbound. Many of you can link this back to what you would term as the Anunnaki or the Elohim. But really, there are a majority of human extraterrestrial races that basically have RH negative blood. So as we stated, it is the product of a starbound, shall we say, archetype. And because there have been 22 different genetic races that have been intermingling their own DNA together with your own genetic stock for many thousands of years, there will always be different types. As we stated, one is not inferior because they have RH positive blood. It's a protein that acts as an amplifier. The only challenge here really relates to that of a RH negative female host who is pregnant and has been impregnated by an RH positive host because that protein is not compatible with the bodily structure genetics of the female in question. That is where there can be a danger. So it is important that there are, shall we say, these particular forms of genetic scans, genetic sequences, genetic analysis prior to that form of engagement. Should a female host be RH negative and should a male host be RH positive, that would be something that you would need to look into. To this particular effect, the only closest aspect in defending the fetus would be through the growth of antibodies or possibly even synthetic antibodies, should your science have that particular means. But basically, in that sense, antibodies are often created to eliminate the protein, again, as it represents a foreign body. So, yes, with the RH negative blood, there is a great deal of intricacies within the cells. This can, therefore, link to certain degrees of immune system quality, the aspect of intellectual quality, the aspect of, in that sense, physical prowess, but again, this can also be, in its own unique way, a benefit pertaining to those with RH positive, positive blood. They are just, again, different types. So star-bound races will have the RH negative. And that is what has been happening upon your planet for thousands and thousands of years. Now, of course, many of you may understand that 15% of your population approximately contains the RH negative blood type. Well, Adronis, how exactly did that happen? Well, we've already told you. Because humans have intermixed their own genetics with extraterrestrials. And again, this is what you would commonly find within human hybrids. Human hybrids would commonly have the RH negative blood type. Not all, but most commonly they would. Yes. So again, RH positive through the protein itself can have its own means of benefits as well too. As we stated, there is no superior or inferior aspect here. But one who discovers that they have RH negative blood does have the lineage on an extraterrestrial level. Now again, others who have RH positive may also have certain lineages to RH positive blood, or shall we say, extraterrestrials that may have RH positive blood, but again, it's not too common. It's much more, shall we say, scarce in that particular way. So again, when you have RH negative blood, yes, you can link it to Anunnaki descent, Elohim descent, human extraterrestrial descent, because there are many of the genetic bodies that exist on an extraterrestrial level that do not require the aspect of the rhesus protein. Again, that is an indigenous form, native to Earth. And so that is the overall differences pertaining to that. Well, Adronis, what type of diet should be involved relating to one has, who has RH negative blood? Well, that all depends upon your blood type because again, all blood types can carry RH negative blood. Now again, many will find that because there is a lack in the protein within the cells, Many may therefore surmise that the idea of a high protein diet may be necessary. This isn't always correct. Now, you have to understand that protein can be found in everything. It does not need to be found just in meat. Is it a good idea to have a high protein diet in that way if you are RH negative? Certainly. But we have always said, listen to your body. 
Let your body speak to you. Get high on love vibration. Tap into your body. Connect to its energy. And you will discover the appropriate diet. So it is theorized that high protein diet would be a recommendation quite commonly with those with RH negative blood. But again, that's not always the case. Really, we would suggest is more of your greens, more of your fruits, more of your organic supplements. That again is allowing your body to function as it needs to. But most importantly, let your body decide what it needs when you are in tune with it to work together in applying an appropriate diet to its own necessity. So, in conclusion, RH negative blood, different form of configuration relating to the cells, much more interconnected, interwoven, intricately designed in that way due to the lack of protein and RH positive blood, cells that contain the rhesus protein that again function as an amplifier, an antenna for cell to cell communication. So neither is better, neither is inferior. These are simply the configurations, again, like apples and oranges. Just one fruit is intergalactic and another fruit is indigenous. We thank you for the opportunity of this interaction. We will now conclude and return to the conduit. Goodbye for now. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. And in case you guys are wondering, uh, yes, I do have RH negative blood myself. So I'm RH negative, O negative blood type as well, too. Uh, share your blood type. Are you guys RH negative as well, too? Feel free to share it in the comments. So again, thank you so much. And I'll speak to you again in the next video. Blessings to you all. And may it be well with you. Goodbye.